Good evening and welcome to our council meeting tonight. We're gonna to start off with our invocation from uh, James Ward with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Please join us. Uh, as a community to give thee thanks for the blessings of this, this great city that we live in. We're grateful for the women and men that serve in elected capacity. We pray, Father, for them as they make decisions and consider the, the needs of our community that they will uh, make those decisions in the spirit of unity and love. We're grateful for the families and um, that live in our community. We pray for them and pray that their needs may be uh, answered, that they will be able to uh, serve and continue adding to the history of this city. This time, Father, we also pray for uh, those that are in a position to uh, serve and protect uh, our communities, particularly firefighters and, and law enforcement. We pray for them and their families as they serve us. And we have a special prayer also for those LA City Sheriff cadets that were uh, injured and we pray for them and their, uh, their families. Uh, these things we pray for humbly in the name of our Savior, even Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, thank you. All right, please stay seated. We're going to go to the Pledge of Allegiance, and you know, Councilmember Casillas is going to lead us off tonight. Thank you. Okay, so at this time, we're going to convene open session, which is, uh, <clears throat> I like to call the meeting to order. Individuals wishing to address the city council request to complete a speaker card and deliver the card to the city clerk staff prior to the item being heard by the city council. Please observe a three-minute limit for communications, and once called upon to speak, we request that you state your name and city of residence for the record. Um, let's see, so we're going to start off with our uh, recognitions. And this is pretty special. We have, we're gonna be celebrating employees here with the city that have been here 25, 30, and 35 years. So uh, tonight we are, sorry? All right. Um, we, will the following employees please join me and the assistant city manager at the podium. Um, as you hear your name, please come down. So Michelle Adams, Scott Briggs, <laughs> Sylvia Hernandez, 
Laura Huerta, Sylvia, or sorry, Cynthia Laura, uh, Angela Nieto, Megan Samano, and Olivia Sanchez, and last but not least, Bridget Weiss. <clears throat> okay, so the City Council um, of the City of Corona is proud to recognize and commend these employees for their 25, 30, and 35 years of dedicated service to the City of Corona. Whereas in our organization's best resources are of its employees, the staff of the City of Corona are dedicated professionals who exemplify caring and epitomize customer service. Their co commitment to the city and its residents are apparent in the number of employees who have dedicated their careers to Corona and have been instrumental in enhancing the quality of life in our community. Uh, whereas the, city, the, the Corona City Council wishes to extend congratulations to those employees who are celebrating a career milestone with the City of Corona, your ongoing contributions are what makes the City of Corona a special place to work as well as professional organization highly regarded by the community that you all serve. Um, now, therefore, I, Mayor West, speak on behalf of my colleagues, do hereby present this recognition with deep appreciation for your dedicated leadership and service to the City of Corona. So thank you. Mr. Bradley, would like to say anything? Thank you, Mary. The, uh, the wealth of institutional knowledge up here is, is staggering. You know, 25, 30, 35 years of service to this community is, is amazing. Uh, the, the level of dedication, the blood, sweat, and tears that you've put into this community it really deserve to be lauded. We really thank you for all that you've done to create stability in the organization, to continue to make us an amazing place to not only work, but also to live in this community. So thank you for your service. So thank you all so much. And please just give them a round of applause here. Oh, Olivia's, there's yours. I apologize. It had the, had the tag on it. So let's go up here and take a picture real quick. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, on to our next, re next res re recognition, which is the 100 year anniversary of the Corona Rotary Club. I'd like to invite uh, Dean Safe, the president of the Corona Rotary and members to the podium to receive the recognition. Come on down. It's uh, interesting when you, when you drive around Corona, um, and you go to different parts of the city, you see things that, that Rotary has had a hand in and things that came well before, you know, I lived here uh, and probably, you know, a lot of us were even alive. So um, I wanna read this really quick just to celebrate your 100th anniversary. Um, the main objective of Rotary is service in the community, in the workplace and throughout the world. Rotarians develop community service projects that address many of today's most critical issues, such as children at risk, poverty, poverty and hunger, in the environment, illiteracy, and violence. They also support programs for youth, educational opportunities, and international exchanges for students, teachers, and other professionals, and vocational and career development. The Corona, I'm sorry, the Rotary motto is service above self. Whereas founded in 1922, the Corona Rotary has raised over $5 million, five million, in support of youth and youth programs right here in our community. Therefore, I, Mayor West, speak on behalf of the Corona City Council to hereby recognize and commend Corona Rotary on their 100th anniversary and their commitment to outstanding contributions within the community. Thank you, Mayor uh, Speak. Um, 
Yeah. It's a proud moment for me to uh, to be the president of the Scrooge Rotary that's uh, celebrating 100 years this year. Uh, we were founded in on December 4th, uh, 1922, uh, in the city of Corona, and we are one of the largest in our district, one of the largest clubs in our district. And uh, um, it, it is service uh, above self, uh, and we do that through uh, helping the community here locally and around the world. Uh, through different fundraisings that we have. The main one is our signature event called Lobster Fest. Many of you have heard about Lobster, Lobster Fest. And uh, then, um, you know, the members uh, give of their time and talents to, uh, to service the community. And uh, up here, you're looking at some of our members. Chief Newman is, is, a, is a member of our club. So is Abby. Where is Abby? Abby is. But thank you for having us, and thank you for uh, the recognition. Thank you. Yeah, step right in front. We'll take a picture. Great. Thank you all. Oh, yeah. I will. Got it. Why don't you make sure we for everybody? <clears throat> okay, on to our next recognition, which is our Citizens Academy. So I'd like to invite the following individuals to the podium to receive their recognition. Uh, Glenn Fr Franco, Liz Franco, Don Fuller, Derek England, Jesse Lopez, Johnny Griffiths, uh, Nancy Price, Cynthia Martinez, Harold Corsi, Narisa Hakeman, and Inez Pineda. Oh, there we go. Come on up. Hello, hello, welcome. So who's gonna be the spokesperson? Mr. Fuller? Mr. Fuller, are you not afraid of a, uh, would you like to be the spokesperson today? Just to talk about the your experience and oh okay <laughs> you're gonna voluntarily hand me I know microphone. it's uh <laughs> it's only because I love you <laughs> uh, oh this wonderful group of people uh, participated in the Citizens Academy it was nine consecutive Tuesday evenings and it was terrific and. Uh, we kept being asked what was the most surprising thing and the most amazing thing you heard. And for me, every one of those nine Tuesday evenings was amazing. Every single one of them was, wow, I didn't know that. And then we got to the next and wow, I didn't know that either. And it was like that for nine weeks. And so if somebody was to ask me the, <clears throat> the number one overriding thing that I really got from the whole thing, I was absolutely amazed at the sheer depth and breadth of the things this town does for its citizens. And every single one of those, it was like, I didn't know that. And now I know part of it, because I couldn't remember it. And I don't know if all your, if all your experiences were the same. This was a great group of people. We, we were all hanging out for nine uh, Tuesday evenings in a row, and they stayed with me, if you can believe that. And um, so that's what I got out of it. I didn't, had no idea that the town had so many different things it did for uh, so for the whole town. And, and the last one we had, which they all stood out, but the last one that truly stood out for me was the efforts that this town is making to take care of homelessness. And it's really important, and it's really difficult, and it's a mess uh, in other places, but I think it's fair to say that this town is making some serious strides to try to deal with homelessness. That was what I got out of it. Anybody else want to talk? Johnny, you want to talk? You want to talk? This is Wes's aunt. See? Oh, no, that's OK. <laughs> well, I, I laugh because I, uh, Justin Tucker invited me the first night, as he has the last, the last two, 
to come in and, and speak a little bit about, about uh, my experience and my experience in the city. And I walked in and started talking and then realized that my aunt was sitting there and I didn't invite her. So uh, I want to say thank you to the Griffiths for inviting her to be in there. And I'm, I'm happy to see my, my aunt. Okay. So I think we got everybody's. Um, if not. Okay. Okay, well, let's take, the, let's, let's take a picture real quick, and then we'll try and get those to you. There should be all there, but maybe some few folks that, weren't, are, that aren't here right now. Yep, come on up. How are you? Okay, I'll give these to you so you guys can take them. Oh, okay, there you go. If you haven't gotten one, go see Naomi and she'll make sure and then get to the, to the rest of the folks. I apologize. Thank you all so much for uh, participating. Okay, uh, next up is Small Business Saturday. So I'd like to, uh, a proclamation, I'd like to bring up Guido Totaro, the owner of Pampas Empanadas to receive our proclamation. Guido's got a mustache. I love it. If uh, you haven't tried an Argentinian empanada, which I hadn't until just uh, a few months ago, um, it was very good and I want to say thank you. So uh, part of this is a, is a National Small Business Saturday. Um, the city of Corona celebrates our local small businesses with contributions they make to the local economy and, and community. Uh, according to the United States Small Business Administration, 32.5 million small businesses are in the United States. Um, small businesses represent 99.7% of firms with paid employees. Uh, small businesses are responsible for 62% of the net new jobs created since 1995. And uh, one of our, our newest businesses is uh, Pompas and Banadas. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much, eh? Thank you. Okay, give me just a minute here. Uh, Ms. Edwards, are there any speaker cards from the public for mere recognitions or proclamations? Mayor, we do not have any speaker cards. Great. Okay, let's go to meeting minutes. Uh, so we are approving the meeting minutes from the study session of, of uh, October 26th and the city council meeting of November 2nd. Ms. Edwards, are there any speaker cards from the public for our meeting minutes? Mayor, I do not have any speaker cards for meeting minutes. I, I'd like to push the button and make a motion. Um, great, so that's, that's a motion. Do I'll I have second. a second? All right, I did, I so did. please vote. Are we trying to do things official tonight? Apparently, I like it. All right, that passes 5-0. We are on to consent calendar. All items listed on the consent calendar are considered to be routine matters, status reports, or documents covering previous city council action. The items listed on the cons consent calendar may be enacted in one motion with the concurrence of this council or uh, a council member or any person in attendance may request that an item be removed for further consideration. Would my colleagues like to pull any items for discussion? Council member Casillas? Okay, three, there you go, four, and none for me as well. All right, uh, Ms. Edwards, are there any speaker cards from the public? Mayor, we do not have any speaker cards for the consent calendar. Look at that. Mayor, I'd like to push the button and make a motion. You, you're, there you go. <laughs> Second. All right. Council Member Steiner, and the Steiner, I'm sorry, the um, Richens and Casillas show. Do I? Right, got it. Check. 
And you push the button too. Gosh darn it. I'm gonna tear up. You guys are following the rules and everything. The very last meeting, thanks guys. <laughs> I know. I love you, man. Okay. I know, that's what I heard. I'm very excited. Uh, let's see, we're on to communications from the public. This portion of the agenda is intended for general public comment only on items within the council's jurisdiction that are not listed elsewhere on the agenda. Please note that state law prohibits the city council from discussing or taking actions on these items. Please reserve a three minute limit for communications and once called upon to speak, we request that you state your name and city of residence for the record. Ms. Edwards, are there any speaker cards from the public? Mayor, yes, we have six speaker cards for communication from the public. Excellent, come on down. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, council members and executive team. Uh, my name is Paul Binder Badesher. I own Express Employment Professionals here in Corona, and I'm the current chair of the Corona Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm standing here really on a nice issue. Um, I'm extending my congratulations on behalf of the chamber to Jackie Casillas, Wes Speak, and Jim Steiner on their re-election uh, to this wonderful city. I hear Jim, yours was the hardest campaign, right? So, yeah. <laughs> and, and obviously by your re-election, you are being endorsed by the residents of Corona. Um, we look forward as a chamber to the continuation of our relationship um, and on continuing to collaborate to solve the most critical issues facing business, um, particularly safety and security. And I commend you for the homelessness strategy to help with that. Um, and obviously things like permitting, which I know are huge topics, uh, but uh, we look forward to resolving them together. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Come on down. Welcome. Uh, my name is Sarah Archuleta. I'm from Corona, and my children attend Foothill Elementary School. Um, I'm sure you know why I'm here. I, we had a very traumatic experience regarding the police training. Um, ours was probably a little bit different than most, considering the way that things went about um, on that day. And I just have some questions and concerns on what your intentions are going forward as far as communicating this to the public, to the school district. I also want to know who is being held accountable for this because in my experience, my children are forever changed. Uh, we were very much under the oppression that we were a part of an active school shooting situation. Um, my children every day have concerns and questions about going to school. We open the door and you know, they're waiting for somebody to say that there's an active shooter and they had my kids run to the office. One of my kids was separated from the rest of us. It was very real for us and it was very tangible and it was very emotional. I mean. I, I saw kids get stuck outside of the school with no parents. It was very disappointing to see the response. Um, and I really kind of only followed along on what was happening on Facebook from you. And I saw your communications that you were not aware. And to me, that's really concerning that something like that, that magnitude was happening in our city and you were not aware of it. So my concerns are who dropped the ball? How is it gonna be fixed going forward? Um, it's not necessarily an accountability thing. It's more of how are we gonna use this opportunity to grow going forward? How is this opportunity gonna be used to make sure that communication is being made to the school? I know there's currently training happening because I'm now getting emails from the school regarding it. We are being notified in advance. That's what should have happened to begin with. Um, it's a very different situation than it could have been. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. It happened. My kids are paying the price. I'm paying the price. It's a very, it impacted us in a very deep way. Um, I think all of the parents that send their kids to school every day are, are know that this is, could be our reality. Our kids are trained for active shooter situations now. Um, and I just wanna make sure that all of that was not in vain and my kids are, did not experience that for nothing and that we're using this as a learning opportunity to make changes and not just move on because what happened happened and it's over. Because for us, it's not over. We're still living with that experience every day. Right. <clears throat> Thank you for coming down. I, um, uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Bradley, did you want to address a couple of those things? Maybe have the chief pitch in. 
You know, we definitely don't want to create any pandemonium in the, in the community. One of the things that we do we, is we train to make sure that we can keep this community safe. Uh, we do try to make sure that we outreach to the community so that they understand what's going on. Um, sometimes there might be breakdowns in that communication. Uh, we do ha and have, as part of this exercise, to continue to uh, create better ties with the community and with our communication channels with the school district and other folks. So we do plan to make sure in the future that there is a saturation of, of the word about what we're doing out in the community. And say we've had two other trainings this week and we put out um, the, the chief helped uh, push some information out to, to folks so we could hear or they, they could know what was going on. And I know as soon as I found out, I, I, I tried to get as much information out there as possible. Unfortunately, some of it was wrong. And I apologize for that on my, my, uh, my point. Um, and I think that we've all learned from this. In fact, I think if you can look at a, a silver lining from this, uh, this experience, uh, I think the chief and I talked about it today, that this, the, uh, you know, everybody is kind of really for us to kind of uh, push the reset button a little bit. Um, that, and I think the, the police department's gonna be working on some PSAs and some other things that we can do to get out to the community. But at the same time, it's also um, a nice time for the, the school district to do some reflection as well on, on how they handle these things. So um, even though it was a, a, you know, a horrible experience for, for some folks, um, where I definitely can say we've learned from this. So thank you for coming in. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, my name is Jennifer Hernandez and I'm a Liberty Avenue resident in the city county of Riverside. And the reason I'm coming forth is in regards to the paving of Liberty. I gave her, is this supposed to be face down? Yeah, it is. There were certain conditions set forth by um, the planning commission in regards to paving of my street. Uh, they left a little flyer on our door, so we all, uh, we all assumed we were getting our street paved. The pavers came out and they're not adhering to any of the conditions that were set. We're getting 16 inches of something called chip seal. And they actually had to hire a special company to come in to do the chip seal because it's something that's not regularly done anymore. I have spoken to several people. I've spoken to US. I have reached out to Mr. Rogers and the city is not adhering to the, their own conditions that were set forth by the planning commission in regards to the paving of our street. They don't even consider chip seal paving. And I, I want answers. I wanna know why the city is, I'm 100% I'm sure Rexco wants his certificate of occupancies and that's why he's in a rush to slap something down and let it be you know, just thrown underneath the rug for all the residents that we're just supposed to accept it, but we're not. We don't want the chip seal, we want the road done right. The conditions I've also been told are legal and binding with the city. I don't know if that's accurate information or not. I have to do a little more research. I have spoken in regards to, I have spoken to the Metropolitan Water District, got documentation from them, and we've been lied to. The residents have been lied to. All these excuses for Rexco to not do the paving on Liberty. And it's absolutely absurd that we're back to square one and we were here three years ago and we assumed that it was taken care of, and it's not. We're not getting clear answers from the city. As, as far as Sandra Yang is concerned, Rexco has met his condition. We were supposed to get a 24 foot wide street. Now we're getting 16 feet of chip seal and the county doesn't even consider that a road. They consider it an improvement to the existing uh, gravel, dirt, whatever we had prior. So I'm coming forth trying to ask for help from the city as to that holding you guys accountable for the conditions that were already put in place. You know, they're there for a reason and there was no objection at the time from the council that the planning commissioner had set forth. So honestly, I'm just baffled that we're back to square one. The residents are in an uproar and I want accountability, you know, we don't wanna be lied to anymore. I also have a voicemail from you that I, uh, Wes, that I asked uh, them to put in the minutes in regards to the, the excuses as to the Metropolitan Water District. The only thing they're worried about is the pipeline and it has to be done properly. So that's why I'm here. I can, I can shed a little bit of light. <clears throat> I did talk to, I've been working with Supervisor Spiegel's office 
you know, on and off on this thing for the last year, you know, uh, going forward, hearing, you know, what all, I don't know what every single one of the issues were, hearing kind of bits and starts. But I did talk to Supervisor Spiegel's office uh, this afternoon, and my understanding uh, is that the county will be accepting the road into its system um, as soon as Rexco completes their, the chip seal project they're doing now. And then over the next six to nine months, I've been, oh my I've been God, promised are six, you kidding me? We've already months, been waiting three years. Six to nine months that that will be accepted in the system and they will finish the road. So um, do we have this in writing? Do uh, we have anything in writing? I know that Supervisor Spiegel's office is working on that right now. It has to go in front of their board. Um, but that's, I'm just telling you what I've, what I've heard today. it doesn't absolve the city from holding responsible to the conditions they set to Rexco to do. So Rexco has completely bowed out of doing the, the work on our street and it's unacceptable, 100%. As soon as I learned Part of the I challenge, Mayor, on this one is that there, you know, it's a county jurisdiction. So we have a condition of approval in our project, uh, but really it's under the control of the county. Uh, we are continuing to work with them to see what we can do to make improvements yeah. over there, and we'll continue to do that. We're going to continue to push us. We want to make sure you guys get what, what, what you... Well, we've been promised, the 24-foot wide street. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, it's going to be up to the county. Um, the but your, your conditions are legal binding documents, right? I, I, that's not a question for me to answer. I don't know. I, okay. I, I don't know. So thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Hope we can get you in some additional information. I'm going to echo a little bit of what Jennifer just said. Yes. Um, I'm here to support my neighbors. Welcome. My name is Mary Gailey. My husband, Gary, and I have lived at 7650 Liberty Avenue since 1973. We also own the property at 7630 Liberty Avenue next door to us. Um, I'm here uh, with regards to the paving project. Uh, according to the conditions, as everybody's seen, Latitude Business Park uh, was uh, given approval on this project and not to issue any COs until uh, Liberty Avenue was paved to a width of 24 feet. Two years have passed, the business park has tenants occupying the buildings on what I'm told are temporary COs and Liberty Avenue is still not paved. Neither is the landscaping complete either and I was told that was supposed to be done before, um, before this was completed also. Uh, we received no formal notice that the road work was to begin. Uh, workers showed up on a Monday, November 7th and uh, my husband went out to talk to one of the workers and he was told that they were laying a 16 foot wide strip of chip seal on the street and were specifically directed not to tie into any of the driveways. So there was a gap between the driveways and the chip seal street. Uh, strip and you know at that point we did our homework and looked up what is chip seal. It's not pavement It's it's um, something cheap that they use on rural roads that nobody travels on or they use it as a base or they use it as something to cover up pavement um, to uh, to repair it um, Most of the residents on Liberty have several cars or work trucks going in and out constantly and chip seal is just not a solution for that street. We need to have the regular asphalt paving. Um, with drainage, the, the houses um, sit up, up above grade. Most of the houses are above grade from the street. And so like when it rains and things, that everything drains into the street and the water's gonna wash out the chip seal and it's just gonna be a mess within a year or two. Um, we saw a street improvement plan uh, dated in, uh, 2021, which included three inches of AC, regular AC pavement, and I'm not sure what happened to that and how we ended up here with tr a three-quarter inch deep thing of this chip seal stuff. Um, we were told also that part of the problem was MWD, that they didn't want to pave the street. We've spoken with people from MWD. We've seen documents, and they say that's just absolutely not true. So, you know, imagine, you know, we're told all these different things. It's very confusing. We can't get a straight story from any anybody. It's just been a big cluster, um, to put it simply. Um, so we're just kind of wondering, what's up with this chip seal thing? Why are we stuck with it? Why is Rexico getting away with doing something cheap when they agreed to pave and uh, assured us all along face to face, oh yeah, we're gonna pave, we're gonna tie into the driveways, we're gonna make it nice for you. And it just, it's not happening. We, you know, the, the original plan was to pave the whole entire length of Liberty, which we didn't care about. We just wanted the strip, you know, just the portion on either side of Washington Street where the residences face the street. The rest of it, you know, is not our concern. Um, if MWD has a concern, it should be the erosion that's on the other side of that hill. It's eroded like to the depth of four feet under from grade, and they ought to be worried about that more than anything else. Um, 
So we're just saying, if, if we're going to get paving there, we'd like to have it done right. And, and we're tired of being just dragged along and lied to. Thank told, you. oh, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, and it's not. Thank you for coming. Welcome. How are you guys doing? My name is Connie Adams. I live on Liberty Avenue, next door to Mary and Gary, the best neighbors in the world. I plan on being there for like 48 years too. They've been there a long time. I'm here with peace, but I've been praying, and I know God's not going to let me down, that you guys are going to do exactly what's supposed to be done. You're going to be fair. And I would be like this, if I lived there, would I want to be done right? Of course I would. So I'm believing that it's gonna be done right. I'm here in peace. I want everybody to have a good evening and God bless you all. Don't forget me, Connie Adams. Oh ma'am, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, everybody. Marissa, Love Foundation. Let's bring up the energy, you guys. It's okay. You're almost out of here. Okay, first of all, uh, my name's Marissa. I'm with my own nonprofit, Love Foundation. No, I don't have my 501c3, but like Pastor Madeline said, go as far as you can without the government's help. So we have. <laughs> um, I have an answer and a solution for the situation they just spoke on. I used to work for All American Asphalt for 17 years office management and purchasing, just hire those guys and say Marissa sent you. And uh, they'll give you a good deal, and they'll do it right. Okay, um, I'm here to just say thank you. I do believe we have great leadership here. Jackie, Tom, Jim, I don't know you that well, Wes, but I, I look forward to it. And Mr. D D Dario, I, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. I'm always at these events, you know, our Halloween, our Christmas, everything we do. I love my city. Born and raised here 41 years. Don't plan on going anywhere. But I just wanted to speak and say, you guys are doing a kick ASS job, okay? It's a long hours. You guys are here instead of with your families. It's time is something we can't buy, okay? And, um, I just appreciate you guys and what you guys are doing. And I hear about all of you guys, angels, and Jim Steiner knows what I'm talking about. You guys have good hearts, and you guys are making change. And I'm excited to witness it, and I'm here. If you ever need me, Jackie knows, just call me, and I'll help you. I'm the, here to be the, the gap and the bridge for homelessness, rich, poor, uh, churches, Joy, just we could get back if we bring all the forces together, love each other, get the judgment out of there, and be together. Love it. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. Good evening. First of all, Joe Morgan, 2063 Run. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the three of you on your reelection. So um, we're, we're done with campaigns for a little while, or at least another year, year and a half or so. Um, so, uh, yeah, the Liberty thing. So I was pretty involved in the whole thing right from, right from the beginning of this whole discussion. And it was real clear what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be asphalt berms, you know, rural, our rural road standard. We do have a standard for there. And the whole, well, it's the county and blah, blah, blah. You know, you know that was our, that was then. That was that discussion. Everybody came through and the county surveyed it. And on the other hand, I, I don't envy Rexco at that corner of the world having to deal with AT&T and MWD and the county and the city. But what I, what I don't understand is how 16 equals 24. That's real clear. And it doesn't understand how macadam, like a, just a little macadam skim on, on dirt, equals a road, because it doesn't. And it was real clear that it was supposed to be an actual road. And and just to say, well, you know, this is what it's going to be, and have the city go and wash their hands of the whole thing, that's, that's bull. That's just bull. It's not right. And, you know, and sort of the, I, I, it seems like they sort of got the brush off. Um, I, I think that that's not right. These are, this is our community. You know, they are a part of the community. Even if they don't live within the city limits, they're being affected by a city project. They are involved in the city. They live their lives in the city. 
you know, they just happen to live a few feet away from the city limits. So I, I don't, I don't think they should be treated any less, uh, you know, any less or less respectful or get less time or have their concerns meet any less, uh, interest from the city. Cause it kind of seemed like they have seemed like they were addressed back by the planning commission. And now it's just, it's all that all just blew away. And now it's like, well, it's back to, well, that's not the it's county's problem. You know, it's sort of echoes of the last council and that's not cool. Um, so, and on another driveway and, and paving note, I did had, did take the chance to go up to, uh, Orange Heights and look at the driveway. That guy's full of shit. He's straight up full of it. And, and I took the, I took the liberty, not really liberty, they're friends of mine, uh, of letting the people know on Ontario. So they know, and they're going to know to come back. And also that the people, you know, other people who have had to build and pay for driveways as part of construction projects. So they all know. So if that guy has the temerity to come back here and ask for a freebie and ask to be let out of his obligations, especially the meeting after we discussed it was $100,000 worth of fees to build a, a 3,500-square-foot house, um, that guy's got the, the, the balls on that guy are tremendous. So thank you very much. Thank you. Roger, can we get a report in the near future on how the city's working with the county to resolve the Liberty paving? That's the will of the council. We can do that. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I know that that uh, I talked to Phil Pauly. He is um, Supervisor Spiegel's chief of staff um, right before I came down or this afternoon. And uh, they are drafting with uh, Riverside County Transportation Department um, exactly what all these steps are going to be. Uh, Mark Lancaster, the head of Riverside County Transportation Department, has already agreed to um, to accept the street, which was one of the issues was it was a um, a street. However, it wasn't a, a street that accepted into the county system. So once they accept it into the county system, they have to bring it to the, up to the county standard, and and that process will go through the county uh, the county's process. And Wes, thank you for looking into it and doing the research. Yeah, I want to make sure it got done. And uh, talking to Supervisor Spiegel, and I know you're on it. I just think the public needs to know sure. that we're on it. And if we can be involved with the city, because I, I sat in those meetings as a citizen on that side where Rexco said they were going to pave it, and the citizens applauded when Pat from Rexco said they were going to pave it. So he needs to live up to those obligations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to legislative matters, uh, ordinance amending various uh, various chapters of Title 15 of the Corona's Municipal Code and adopting, and by reference, the 2022 California Building Standards Code, uh, California Code of Regulations, Title 24. Um, let's see, do I have any questions or comments from my colleagues on this matter? Or do we want to get the presentation first, correct? Yep, doesn't say it on my list, but we'll. Mayor, we do not have any speaker cards. Okay. Is this number 17? or Number 17. I have one question. Sure. And I, I'm just hoping to amend this a little bit, if it's possible to amend it a little bit. I read this document by a fire, all of it. Is all of it? Wow. Most of it. And uh, there is a section on playhouses that I'm, I would like to get some clarification on before <laughs> we start voting on this thing. And it's uh, the playhouses can only be 10 foot by 12 foot. And I know some... Others build bigger playhouses. And so if we could amend that to 12 foot by 15 foot, I'd, I'd like to make that motion. <laughs> and do I, and Dean, do I have to recuse myself? I, I do need, Council Member Richens, where in reference are you referring to in the document? Is it the city's ordinance? Yeah, it was 15 point something, and it's playhouses and sheds. If you can just give me a second. Mine's 10 by 13. It's 12 by, 12 by 10 is the... 12 by 10 is the, is the city recommendation. Mine's 10 by 13, and I don't want to vote to put my playhouse in trouble. Yeah, if you had pulled a permit, Tom, you'd already, you'd already been grandfathered. It, if you would have read Section Title 15, <laughs> you don't need to pull a permit on a playhouse or a shed, so I did not, but I would like to keep the length. Okay. Ambiguous or bigger at most. Fair enough. 
Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm looking over at the attorney and he's looking away from me on purpose, I think, but. (laughs) Yeah, so the way that it works in our municipal code amendment, the way that the law reads is that we can actually adopt standards, but our standards cannot be less than what's allowed in the California Building Standards Code. So we can actually implement requirements that are more restrictive, but they cannot be less restrictive. So that's what we are adhering to. I would like to withdraw my motion. (laughs) and pretend okay. this conversation didn't take place. <laughs> All right. Um, so with that, um, <laughs> I don't know where to go now. Uh, do we have a motion uh, to accept this? Uh, I'll make a motion quickly, and I did I'll push the button. Quicker. Okay, a second. Okay, so um, Councilmember Richens, the motion needs to be read, so... <laughs> Uh, go right ahead. I'd like to read this motion. What did you? The blue part, Tom. It's the big, long blue part. <laughs> oh, golly. I'm trying to read here. <laughs> Introduced by title only and waive full reading for consideration of ordinance number 3357, first reading of an ordinance amending... Amending chapters 15.02, 15.04, 15.05, 15.07, 15.08, 15.09, 15.10, 15.11. I have to read all this, right? 15.12, 15. 15.20, 15.28, and and updating chapters 15.52. 15.56, 15.60, there's a lot. Uh, Title 15 of the Corona Municipal Code, (laughs) adopting by reference the the 2022 edition of the California Building Standards Code, California Code of Regulations, Title 24 including the 2022 California Building Code, the 2022 California Green Building Standards Code, the 2022 California Residential Code, the 2022 California Mechanical Code, oh man. The 2022 California Energy Code, the 2022 California Historical Building Code, great code by the way. The 2022 California Existing Building Code, the 2022 California Fire Code with errata. I don't know what that means. The 2022 California Plumbing Code, the 2022 California Electrical Code, together with certain additions, insertions, deletions, and changes thereto, and updating related ordinances for uniformity with current codes. Great job. You gonna make you gonna make the motion next time, Tom? Please vote. <laughs> no. Oh, that was great. <clears throat> Look at that five zero. No, <laughs> with no amendments. Okay, so we have no planning commission reports, no park and recreation commission reports. We're under regional reports. An update from Councilmember Kathy Casillas on, on the WR Cog meeting of November seventh. All right, hold on, let me make You're sure up. I've got the fan on. That was a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, listen, we had a resolution. We adopted a resolution. Um, returning. <laughs> Can you read it? <laughs> that was just... <laughs> and now this guy will stop laughing. <laughs> okay, all right, let's get it together, Jim. Come on. Um, we adopted a resolution uh, to return unclaimed funds to the state of California. That was a a discussion we had, a thorough discussion we had last time. We also talked about the commercial PACE program, and this is not to be confused with the residential PACE program. Um, The commercial PACE program, uh, this last fiscal year, 2021, uh, financed 11 projects for a total amount of $79 million. The uh, 21-22 fiscal year, 11 uh, commercial PACE projects uh, were completed, totaling the 68 million and covered six energy efficiency um, 
uh, and three renewable systems and two new construction projects over 12 million in CPACE financing was used by business owners in two WR COG subregional projects. So all this to say the CPACE program is healthy. It's also very much um, a smaller number of projects and it's going strong. So that was really the meat and potatoes of that WR COG meeting. And that's it for me. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, update from Vice Mayor Tony Daddario on the uh, <clears throat> RCA meeting of November 7th as well. Yep. Uh, it was a good meeting uh, down in uh, Riverside and Chambers. Um, one of the things that I wanted to just touch on briefly and highlight was the, um, the RCA annual report for 2021. Um, big, the highlight part, of, the highlight portions of it is that in 2021, we acquired 1,321 acres into the MSHCP for conservation. Total, we are at 64,123 acres. Um, that's from the, incep in the uh, inception of the MSHCP through 2021. And really what that means for their goals uh, of uh, 153,000 total acres is we're at about 42% uh, of our goal. So we've, we've got uh, roughly 90,000 acres to conserve. Um, and we are working to, to do that as well. Um, what does that mean for Corona? Well, right now, Corona currently has 367 total acres that are in the conservation in our rough step. We're well within our rough step, which means we're, you know, we're meeting our goals, which step. is definitely good. Um, RCA is going to be doing a land tour. They thought it'd be a good idea to get a bunch of us out there to go hiking for a couple of miles. Um, I negotiated you know, a much more abbreviated version of hiking for several miles out in the wilderness. Uh, but at least it's not in the middle of summer and we're not doing it in 110 degree weather. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Next up is an update from myself on RCTC. However, I had a conflict and uh, Councilor Bersteiner was happy enough to step in. Oh, I was thrilled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it was a really long meeting, but I'll try to. Yeah. Try okay. To sure it was. Um, we did vote uh, to adopt a resolution for an eminent domain of four and a half acres uh, in Paris that would widen Placentia Avenue from two to four lanes. Uh, an offer of just compensation has been made for that. And there's going to be a test pilot for some new technology along the 15 corridor starting out in Temecula. Basically uh, has all the meters and lights uh, near the freeways all kind of talking to each other. Uh, it's the first one to be tried in the state and the second in the whole country. And um, it's currently at a 95% design level, so I'm hoping and I'm sure that's going to make some pretty significant improvements, and that comes this way in our neck of the woods. No. That completes my report. See how quick you can do that, Wes? Easy. You had two Easy items. Peasy. You got lucky. There was, two, uh, there was two items on there. Got lucky. Thank you. Thank you. Don't lucky. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see, city attorney's report, Mr. Durleth? No uh, city manager's report, Mr. Bradley? Uh, nothing, Mayor. Okay, council member report, advanced travel request for the city council member, Jackie Casillas, to ascend the 2022 League of Cities Leaders Workshop. Does any council member want a staff report on this item? Listen, I'm, uh, it's the annual uh, workshop and- There's no, no report needed. Okay, well, I'm just saying. <laughs> Lobby me now. Tell me what you want me to go up, but I will come back with a full report and some notes to share. So thank you. We yeah. appreciate that. Um, Ms. Edwards, are there any speaker cards to this item? Mayor, we do not have any speaker cards. Okay, great. We have a motion. I'll move. Yeah. Second. <laughs> Please vote. I can vote on this sure. as well. Right. Yeah. Dean? Tom said it's okay. Oh. Vote to build the playoffs. <laughs> Okay, five. <laughs> yes, got to read this. Uh, now on a council member reports, uh, Council Member Casillas, do you have any comments tonight? Yes, I was just going to say that um, we had a regional, the Riverside County Division uh, League of Cities meeting uh, was held on, when was it? Just recently. It was Monday? Yes, yeah, Monday. it was a couple days ago at, in Riverside. And we had uh, Randall Lewis from the Lewis Operating Corp provide a, um, an update about, uh, you know, what housing and development regionally, and you two that are in the business probably know this, 
you know, like the back of your hand. But basically, you know, there's a lot looming. Um, the uh, Mr. Lewis contends that, you know, if we're not in a recession already, we're, we will be um, next year. Um, you know, uh, gave a reference to the fact that, um, you know, loans are slowing down. Um, office lease renewals are likely going down. Made some recommendations for economic development departments across the region to really build good relationships with leasing brokers and understand, you know, their needs. Um, if uh, to try and make connections between um, potential leasees and uh, open space in your city. Um, also, uh, Mr. Lewis brought up the fact that you know movie theaters are, are really struggling right now, uh, and so we're likely going to see those impacts. Um, and uh, he made uh, reference to you know the impact of Sacramento's um, policies, housing policies, and um, you know uh, their downstream impacts on you know on residents and wealthier residents and uh, where they are choosing to to relocate to and um, making the connection that um, losing folks like that not just lose, is not just makes an impact on your tax revenues that there's also a philanthropic impact so anyhow it was interesting to see and to hear from an expert in the field um, you know what they're seeing firsthand and what that could possibly mean for um, us in our uh, local economy and our residents. And um, we also set priorities and requested um, more speakers in the next calendar year um, to come in and share their expertise. So, you know, I'll, I'll be sure to, um, to let you guys know when the local division meetings are because it's not just uh, um, open to, to one council member. It really is open to all of us. And the additional benefit is not just from, you know, hearing from these experts discussing, you know, bigger um, issues happening statewide or regionally. It's also from the connections that we're making with our other colleagues in other cities and hearing what it is that they're seeing and in their communities. So anyhow, I just wanted to report back on that. And um, it, yeah, it just, it's, it's pretty bleak. So thanks, Mayor. Thank you. I know, total. Councilman Richens. Uh, a few things to talk about, and I'll, I'll make them quickly, but um, just want to talk about them. The first is uh, I had the privilege to attend the Mayor's Youth Council Town Hall meeting, and I'm sure the Mayor will speak to that. But uh, just my opinion, it was so refreshing to see so many youth show up, fill the seats, and then they had the ability to listen to a mayor who was armed with knowledge. There is not one thing that Wes didn't know or the answer to, and even I tried to throw him some curveball questions, and he sidetracked me. And and uh, but he handled it well. And our may our mayor's youth council is really good. I don't know if that's the right words. Next is uh, um, yesterday the press enterprise reached out and they wanted to know about the history of City Park and why the need for a a city revitalization of the park. And so I, uh, I started jumping into it and I started reading the history on the park and, and how it came about and how it was a dream of uh, mostly of one citizen named L.R. Nichols. And instead of promoting a bunch of smaller parks, he promoted one big city park. And at the time, at 1912, 1913, how genius that was and how well designed this park was. And in those days, you didn't have radio and TV and movie theaters and as much electronics as we have now, but we had this really big park where our community truly came together. And uh, we had incredible baseball games at the park and we had the Mexican baseball leagues at the park. And if there was ever a time where our community thrived the most, it probably was at that park. So as our city enters into a phase of revitalization, please participate in the surveys, please participate in the pop-ups. Our park needs some help, our city park, but it has the potential to really, really be what it once was, if not even better because of technology. So there is that. Third, um, 
I, I like to joke around more than anyone, but there's there's times to be serious, and I, it, for a moment, it's against my nature to be serious, but I, I would like to talk about the police training that happened the other day and to the mom that was here and spoke. First off, it is beautiful that a, a mom showed up to a council meeting and used that microphone to express her concerns. And that's exactly what that microphone is for. And I tell people, of all the microphones, it's that one that's the most important in this room. Second, her question is, who is responsible and what is being done about it? Well, the truth of the matter is we're all responsible. All five of us up here are responsible. City manager is responsible. Police chief is responsible. Anybody that works for the city is responsible. And I, uh, I'll give some background information on how that day went. The mayor got involved, I got involved, I think all of us got involved. We gave opinions, we talked to the city manager. The police chief got greatly involved. And uh, the involvement wasn't because they had to, it was because they wanted to. They read the same comments on Facebook that I read. They heard the same reports of kids scrambling and mom scrambling. And they got involved because they care about their citizens. And it's just that simple. It's easy to point fingers, and quite honestly, it's easy for things to go wrong. And sometime in the future, things will go wrong again. But I couldn't be any more proud of how it was handled afterwards. People that worked here, people that were elected, responded with care and love and concern for their citizens. There were many, many conversations, and I, I truly hope she's listening. I believe in the future going forward, there are steps that are going to be taken and some of those steps haven't been revealed yet, but they will. And when they do happen, it'll be even better. And so what was a scary time for our city will make our city better. And I, I want to give that background information. I thank everyone and all that helped. And uh, I thank the Riverside Police Department for their apology. I think the Corona Police Department in full wisdom apologized. I think we can move on and go better from here. And that's the right approach to it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Councilmember Steiner. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on the whole liberty situation. I, I, um, I want to make sure that whatever promises we made as a city, that we follow through, period. And uh, if, if not, we better get a damn good explanation why. So that's it. Great. Thank you. Vice Mayor. <clears throat> Just a couple comments. Um, last week on Veterans Day, um, we were all uh, able to attend the Veterans Day celebration at the Joe Dominguez um, Post here in Corona. They put on a great event. Their, um, their guest of honor was a gentleman by the name of Richard Lockman, and I hope I pronounced that right. Mm -hmm. He's a World War II vet. He's a longtime Corona resident, and he was the pharmacist at Savers Drugstore for anybody that was around... Um, to experience that, um, just a, I mean, ever if ever you give you get a chance to listen to that man's story, it's it's a it's ripe for a made-for-TV movie. I mean, he's just a, a great man. He had a smile on his face the entire time. Uh, it was very very uh, moving to hear about it and to honor our veterans. It was a almost a packed house, and so very great to see them there. Um, and, and as always, they put on a great event, and then. Um, Two weeks ago, I was able to attend the Amber Waves of Green event. Um, what a great event it was. Most of us were out there at different times. Uh, it was good to see a, a, a packed Dos Lagos uh, parking lot, and the event went off without a hitch. Um, and I, I don't know what their totals are, but I'm guessing that they raised a bunch of money because drinking beer for freedom sounds like a great thing to me. Um, so that was great. And and uh, just, a, just a small... Uh, sad turn of events for the Amber Waves of Green. Um, that was the final day that Carrie Smith, who has been a lifelong resident of the city of Corona, that was her last event. Her and her husband picked up and moved to Alabama, of all places, but it's to be closer to family. And so um, I know that she's probably watching from Alabama, and she'll probably text me later and yell at me, but um, <laughs> we miss her, and uh, Alabama's lucky to get her. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, just want to cover a couple things, or a few things. I uh, went to uh, John Zickenfus. He's a longtime uh, Corona, uh, Corona Narco school board member. Uh, he is, is retiring and leaving the school board. 
Um, and there was a bunch of folks there that kind of gave gave uh, a lot of talks about him. And I think John Z worked at the library for a very long time. Very touching to hear his story about illiteracy. I mean, he didn't know how to read. And um, and he, if you ever get a chance to see that on YouTube, it's it's a pretty moving. And seeing you know what he did with his life and how he gave back and how he continued to give back was pretty special. So. It was nice to be able to send him off with a boy. It was a packed house full of people that were that were really uh, sad to see him go. But he and his wife are, are moving to Idaho of all places. That's a, that was my my question. Um, Veterans Day was a full day as expected. Started off at the Corona Chamber of Commerce Veterans Day um, event. Uh, they do put on a, a wonderful event. Let uh, vets come up and talk about their experiences and and their service. And it was great to see that uh, that event. And it's all free for them. Uh, and then a little bit later, Councilmember Steiner and I were at Valencia Terrace um, to wish their vets a happy Veterans Day. And then uh, finally ended with um, uh, post 742's uh, so dinner and celebration, which was great. And you're right to, to hear uh, Mr. Lockman talk about his life was pretty amazing in that. He's an amazing guy for a lot of reasons, um, and not just for his service, but his service here in, this, in the city. Um, Councilmember Richens, thank you for pitching in on Mayor's Youth Council. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. I had to kind of scrap my um, my uh, PowerPoint, which I think didn't make anybody too sad. But um, I but I will. It, what it did is it allowed us to have more of a conversation. And and these kids are so amazing. The questions I got 30, 35 questions. I counted them this morning. Thirty five questions, and of complicated questions about you know, everything from housing to recycling to renewables to, I mean, really in-depth and in follow-up questions too. So it was great to see. And uh, Council Member Richens came in and guest hosted the uh, cahoots at the end of the night and um, did a nice job. Yeah, you'd be very proud. Uh, went to the crossings for a car, car show on Saturday. It was really great to see so many people out there. In fact, there was so many people they sold out. They couldn't actually get any more cars in this area. So people just kind of impromptu were parking around. So it's nice to see people get out. Um, later on the night from the Mayor's Youth Council, I went over to um, pay my respects to Tariq Shama, uh, met with his wife and his children and grandchildren. Uh, wow, what a what a life. Um, and his wife uh, sat down with me and shared, you know, probably about 200 different pictures of different things in South Corona. And, and it was uh, happy to present a, a uh, recognition on, on his behalf. Um, just want to remind folks that the Main Street westbound closure is going to be in effect till Sunday, uh, or actually Monday morning. Um, that's for the settlement issues that have been happening on the 91, kind of accelerated in the last few years. Um, but I think that's there's probably one more closure I think is going to happen, and it's going to be on the west side between now and the end of the year. I haven't gotten the exact dates yet. Um, and as Councilman Richardson said, the, the city pop-up event on Saturday is, is well worth it. Um, I would love to be there. Unfortunately, I'm, well, not unfortunately, but fortunately I'm getting married on Saturday, so I can't go. Um, my fiance already said I could not. Um, I said, I think I could, I think I'd may, I try to make it, but um, it's uh, it's an important thing. It really is the, the heart and soul of our community and, and it needs to be um, um, lifted back up to where it needs to be. So with that, I wanna close with kind of a Thanksgiving um, thank you to not just everybody, it's a special time. You get together with your friends and family. In my house, it was basically to get together and see who could talk the loudest, believe it or not, and the most. And I'm not the person that won, never. Um, got a lot of cousins. Um, no, no, I didn't, not at all. No, no, in fact, my aunt can, she's shaking her head right now, I should tell you that I'm not the person. Um, so, but it's a perfect time to express your gratitude um, for your family, your friends, and uh, for those of you that you know, stood by your side uh, this year. I've always loved this quote by Marcel Proust. It said, let us be grateful to people who make us happy. They are charming gardeners who make our souls blossom. And I always, I always like that. So I wanna make sure thank you to my colleagues, thank you to city staff, our wonderful residents and businesses, and uh, my family, and most of all, my amazing soon-to-be wife. So with that, we'll adjourn until uh, December 7th. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.